congratulations for making the shortlist. How Thank does you. that make you feel? Wow, it, it, that's a very good question. It makes me feel great. It, it, it actually made me feel that I've been able to learn. My, my goal in life is to learn. I've been able to learn from all of the historical documents that's available for us. And I've been able to learn from everybody that has been able to stand up and represent the interests of black people, the interests of Africa and perhaps the interests of Nigeria, you know, at the local and international level. It means that I've learned from them. I'm talking about people like, you know, just to mention a few of them, Wale Shoinka, Nelson Mandela, and other great black people. Because their action is actually an example, and their example is encouraging us to walk in that light. So making the shortlist told me that I've been able to walk in the in the footstep of these great people, and I, it can only get better. If I continue in this journey, I will be able to carry forward all of the great work they have done for us as a nation and for Black people in general. The first thing that comes to my mind when I hear Uju Elekba Crossroads is Fela. Absolutely. Fela is such an iconic figure in Nigerian politics. He, Fela, Fela is more than a, a musician. He's a political figure whose only objective, his primary focus for the entire lifetime of his is the advancement of Black people, the advancement of his country. And the opportunity for us to partake as leader in global affairs. That's all he cared about. He, the music is just a tool for him to express that. And he sang about Oju Elegba for Oju Elegba, he used Oju Elegba as a metaphor to capture the diversity of Nigeria and the opportunity that is inherent in that diversity. How can a country of diverse people harness the skills of those people to, to create a great nation? That was the idea of Oju Elegba. And he was trying to create a metaphor that says that we are unable to cultivate that diversity to build a great nation. That was all he was saying in that music. That conversation itself was a conversation before Fela. Uju, if you look at Oju Elegba, he's such a very important place. There is the Elegba. The, the name Oju Elegba actually came from Ojubo Elegba. There is an Elegba masquerade shrine right close to that to that crossroad. So, and if you understand that in African literature or in African culture, the masquerade represents the ancestors. So it's a point where the ancestors are staying back and watching how we are actually conducting the affairs of the present. That is the metaphor that Fela was trying to project. That is the basis of most of his music. And I was just picking on that to further the conversation of development of Black people, just like he did and every great person. We're talking about Ken Saru Wiwa, we're talking about a lot of other people. I was just trying to pick up on that and further that conversation. Tell me about the journey of Jojo Elegba Crossroads from conception to shortlist. Good question. Jojo Elegba has a book started 23 years ago. I conceived the idea 23 years ago. I was still in school. Myself and my good friend, we were in our room. I just finished, to be honest, I just finished reading the book Death and the King of Men by Wally Shoinka. It was a couple of days when I read that book that I started thinking about my country, Nigeria. And I, I, I looked at it from the, con I read chemical engineering and there, there were a lot of chemical engineers coming out of university. But at that point, when I finished university and I was trying to get a job, I realized that most of the products in Nigeria are pre-chemicalized before they are sent into Nigeria, meaning that most of our jobs are actually abroad. We have not been able to develop a system that allows me as a chemical engineer or any other, a lot of chemical engineer in Nigeria to practice. It means that the country has not been able to harness the skills it's producing for national development. So I started thinking seriously about the implication of that on the people who come 
after me. If I'm having this issue, what about the people who will come after me? So I thought I would write a book that talks about the opportunity for black people to unite and create a great nation that can empower the people and that can ensure that the country itself is being recognized as a very relevant country in global development. That, that was a concept that led to Duelegba. It wasn't a very easy book to write because before you can write a book like that, you need to go into a lot of research. I did a lot of research. I did a lot of you know consulting. I spoke to a lot of people. Uju Elegba Crossroads as a book was a report of all of those years of reading, research, travel, questioning, and trying to understand the problem, limiting the advancement of Black people or, and Nigeria in particular. So by the time I, I finished the book, I thought I, I was going to submit it to the NLNG Prize for Literature. But before that, I submitted it to other organizations. I it was successful. And when it was completed after 23 years of writing, I submitted it to NLNG, and here we are. It is very interesting that it made a shortlist because it tells me that what I was preoccupied about over the last 23 years is actually a concern for most people. It's, it's not only my concern because a lot of people find found relevance. I'm sure the people who are actually looking at the book, they found relevance in the question I was trying to answer, in the idea I was trying to propose, using theater as a genre for doing that. And it, it, I'm sure it also resonated with them because it was very, it was an African book. I wasn't writing like, I wasn't writing like, I'm not, I'm right, I was writing like I was African. I'm, I'm using African language, which is very interesting because it allows us to actually create documents that can represent our culture so that people in the future can look back and look at the kind of document we created. The same way I'm looking at the books of the people I mentioned, some people, some young people in the future will look at my own work, they will see the relevance, they will see the use of language, and it will be an instruction for them to be able to create documents that can be relevant to the social environment, the, the, the social situation of the country at that point. So uh, at the point of your submission for the award, for the literature award, what were your expectations? That was a very direct question, and I'm going to ask that directly. The only concern I had was that if the right people were given the opportunity to look at the context, I knew I would be here. It's just a question of who is going to be in the panel of judges. If the right people are in the panel of judges, I knew Uju Elegba Crossroad will come this far. Uju Elegba Crossroad is a very culturally relevant book. It's relevant for the unity of Nigerians, the unity of Black people. It's relevant for us to be able to reconcile the effect of slavery. It's relevant to all of the affairs that, are, that affects Black people. It's also relevant for the current implication of slavery that happens many centuries ago. We, it, because it's addressing the stereotype against black people, because Nigeria has 10% of black people in the world. So when you talk about black people, you are talking about Nigeria because there are more black people in Nigeria than in any other part of the world. So it addresses the stereotype we are still dealing with, even though slavery is out of the way. It addresses our fetishness for other colors but ourselves. Fela talked about that extensively. People not feeling comfortable in this black skin and then spending resources to change the color of their skin, which happens to be a skin that is very great. And that talked about the fact that we have been manipulated to not have confidence in ourselves. And that is the worst thing that can happen to any generation of people. For them not to feel confidence about themselves, it's a very terrible thing. So when I knew that those are the things I was addressing, I knew that, and it was, it, it was actually a report of a research project, I knew that it's gonna come, it's gonna go really far. As a matter of fact, when, when my editor read the book, he told me that this book is going to win the award. 
is going to win a lot of awards. And surprisingly, the one that did the first editing was not even an African. The book actually educated us a lot about African. He said, everything I read in your book was different from what I was taught in school. And I looked them up, they were right. How come you guys are not talking about all of this? I said, that's why I'm talking about it. So I, I knew it would come this far. I am I'm confident that it will go much farther. It's, it's, it, it, it's a book. You know, when you write a book and you read the book and the book is even educating you, that's because the book was actually not my own work. It was, it was an output of researching and trying to understand what is the problem with us. Why can we not get it right in our country? But when we move out, we become shining beacon of excellence. Is there something within our nation that takes away the excellence? So those are the questions that I was engaging with to try and understand how we can move our country forward, given our skills, resources, and opportunities. What do you think about what NLNG is doing with this Nigeria Prize for Literature? I don't even have words to express my gratitude for NLNG. Not now, because I've been observing this for a long time. I cannot express how grateful I am that there is an institution in Nigeria that is working towards creating literature. The most important thing any, any, any culture can have are the document they created. Their literature is by far the most important heritage they could have. You know, a Persian writer was saying that a child is not the father or is not the son, is not the son of his father, but that of his culture. Because there's little you can do for your child. You are only his father when he is with you. When he leaves you, it is your culture that becomes the guardian that he has. The culture of the people is most documented in books so that when the people of the future comes, they can see how the people of the past live their lives. The biggest problem about African literature is that most of them are not documented. That is why we have foreign historians writing lies about us because we have not written anything for ourselves. That is why Mongo Park was the one that discovered River Niger. That is why Mary Slessor was the one that stopped the killing of twins in Nigeria. Because we never wrote, so they wrote. So having an organization encouraging people to write is the most important thing anybody can do for the history of that nation. The, by far the most important thing. Because encouraging people to write means that there will be documents that will be created. One for the three people wrote, a couple of them will write, a couple of us will write really awesome book. Those awesome book could be the document that people will interact with. Imagine if we never had anybody like, you know, Sefi Atta, like Wale Shoyinka, J.P. Clark, and other people. There is no basis for us to interact with the culture of the past, which they talked about extensively in their books. So now having people writing a mass means that NLNG is empowering writers to create document, historical document that will be relevant to the history of Black people. And the more people write, the more these books will find their way across the world. My book is, is in as far away as in Russia and other parts of the world, meaning that a lot more people can now interact with African culture and literature. And the only thing that is encouraging that is that some people are encouraging people to write. Those books will find their way. Imagine if those books were not written. The, 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 this is a very interesting thing you'll notice. When you speak to somebody that's not been to Africa, the idea of Africa from the book they read is not the idea of Africa you live in. The idea of Africa is that we still live in mud houses. We still live on trees. We still have lions walking beside us because we, we are onto Gadra. That is the narrative that is very prevalent in their culture. And that's because we have less document, we have less books for them to read. But when we have a lot of books for them to read, they now know that everything they have been taught about us is false. 
what better thing can be done to a culture than for people to know the right thing about them? So I'm using this opportunity to speak to all other stakeholders to look for ways to create more of these. $100,000 is a very small token to be paid for the preservation of the culture of some set of people. It's, it's just it's as, it's as small as one cobble. Most of the books we have written, most of all will be available 500 years from now. 500 years from now, $100,000 is just... But people down the line will know about the history of the past. And people will not have to say that Africans are people without history before colonialism. We have history, we have literature, we have some that are documented, we have some that are undocumented. Documented. Now that we are now documenting it, with the help of an organization that is sponsoring that, we are creating a new narrative for people to now see us from different perspectives altogether. What will winning that prize do for you in particular? Winning the NLNJ Prize for Literature gives me the power, gives me the opportunity to partake full-time in national development. It means I have a credential that talks about me from a very relevant body that allows me to create content for national development, for national orientation, with which I can engage with stakeholders and try to create a new narrative for the people. It means it gives me, the, 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 the money itself is on the side. The fact that you now have a template, you now have like a, a pedestal, if I can use the word, a pedestal to now engage with people having been a winner allows me the opportunity to be some to be part of something greater than myself, which is about developing my country, being a part of that development, creating document that can actually empower people to think. I'll give you a good example just to actually bring it on. A book was written sometimes in Russia. It was written, it was called A Day in the Life of Ivan Denisov. It was actually the book that was very, very relevant to the the construction of communism. I think it was written by Alexander Soseskin. It was a rock, it was a Russian author. That tells you the power of literature because it, it kind of changed the way people look at realities in a manner that allows them to ask for a new one. And being able to win this program allows me to partake full time. Currently I'm studying public policy in the McMaster University. It's not an happenstance. Is because I'm already I've already spent half of my lifetime. The other half is supposed to be spent in the pursuit of the improvement of the of my country, to be able to project my, my people more and to create documents that allows other people to see us in the right light. So winning that just gives me like a pedestal to operate. I can now create policy brief and, and, and engage with stakeholders about how to empower the youth. We have a lot of youthful population who are probably engaged in the wrong things, cultism, um, internet fraud and things like that. Anybody that can do internet fraud can be a programmer. Anybody that can actually go into cultism to, to join the military. So that we can now create, we can now create a lot of policy brief that allows all of this youthful population we have to be redirected towards national development. I, I think that's by far the most important thing that I can take away from this is to give me an opportunity for engagement to create a new narrative for my country, different from what we have now. As a way to round off, your story is quite inspiring. You've been on this project for 23 years Others would have given up. I mean, I'm sure you know that. You are from a, an engineering background and you found home in the arts and you are doing so well. You've also used the things going on in Nigeria as a springboard, as inspiration for the things you write about. So you see that you are a, a person of different parts, all come together to deliver what has been described as a masterpiece. What would you tell anybody who wants to travel this road that you have traveled? The first thing is that you need to under, you need to read about the culture of your people. 
one of the most important things that we need to actually address in our country is that we do not have an educational system that actually projects African culture in the right perspective. So because we, our educational system does not project us as king that we are, as really intelligent people that we are, as really powerful people that we are, it's up to anybody that wants to travel this road for us to know that fact that I come from, I come from a generation of people, I come from a lineage of people who are born of greatness because of their black skin. Immediately you know the culture of your people, the culture of the Yoruba, the culture of the Igbo, the culture of the Hausa, the culture of the of the Ibibio and every other culture, as much as you can consume. It gives you a sense of identity so that your writing reflects that culture that you ultimately belong to. And you can never be a great writer unless you reflect your own identity. You only be a liar trying to be something else. So for anybody that wants to travel this route to achieve this level of greatness, first, you need to know the history of your people. You need to read great works, all of the great works created, you know, Bolisho Inka, Chinua Achebe, and other African writers, Sefi Ata and Marian Ba. So when you read all of this, and you start your journey reading the work of foreign authors, you don't take everything the right hook, line, and sinker because you already have a background of your own people, so you can identify the lies. Nothing inspires you to write a great book than to actually understand that what has been written about you is not correct. Having done that, another very important thing that we need to do, that anybody that wants to travel the road need to do is that, you need to cultivate the fact that you, you, you are not the one that has the most superior opinion. The trap to greatness is for you always to believe that you know more than every other person. It puts you in a box. You need to be able to cultivate the opinion that are foreign to you and see how it can be relevant to your work. And you need to be able to know how to deal with uncertainties. We are trained to try and go the way of certainty. You need to be able to cultivate that. What if I don't know what to do? Because more often than not, you will not know what to do. Contrary to what we are made to believe, you will not know all of the right answers. You need to know that there are more contexts to the same point of view than your own context. So when you get into conversation, you are listening, not talking. And it's only in listening that we learn more. I, I've learned more from, from listening than I probably learned when I through my entire days in the university. So knowing the culture of your people, learning to listen, obtaining other people's point of view, keeping your mind open and not being judgmental are the recipe for you to be a great writer.